Uh, to give you a reminder of where we were yesterday, uh, we'll just kind of fly through um, the parts that we talked about yesterday. Um, so Jesus was uh, arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, on the Mount of Olives, and uh, a large number of um, soldiers came uh, to arrest him. Um, and remember that um, this is um, uh, kind of staged as a four-act play. I don't know why, um, but it is. And, and uh, a, a Roman, um, a, a cohort of, of uh, soldiers um, met with Jesus and uh, to arrest him. And uh, that was anywhere from 200 to 1,000 soldiers. So uh, they had far more. They were outnumbered. No, ma no matter how many it was, they were, they were greatly outnumbered. Um, and Judas comes to the forefront, and he um, betrays Jesus uh, with a kiss. Um, and I, and I want to, I want to, I was going to mention this later, but I'll just mention it now. Because students every year have trouble to, figuring out who denied Jesus and who betrayed Jesus. And it's two different things. Judas was his betrayer. To betray someone is to do something um, unfair to that person that is uh, very um, onerous. Uh, and so he betrayed him by uh, being his disciple and pretending to be on his side um, when all the while he was planning to give him over to the world. Uh, so that's a betrayal of Jesus. Peter denied knowing Jesus. Uh, to deny means to, to say no. Uh, and so when he was asked three times, you were, you were one of his followers, right? Each time he said, I'm, I don't know. I, I No, I, I was never with him. So he lied about that, and that's that's a denial, right? So Peter's the denier, and uh, Judas is the betrayer. Yes? Was Judas planning on betraying Jesus for a long time, or was it once the moment offered to go? We know that it was sometime before the Last Supper, because at the Last Supper, the, the passage says that he already knew what he was going to do. So how, how long before that? I'm... I, I'm imagining, but I mean, this is just like when we get to heaven, you know, of course, we'll understand um, that he, kind of the last straw for him was when Jesus rebuked him uh, for, you know, rebuking Mary and saying this should have been sold and given to the poor when he was really just wanting to pay for that money. Um, and he, and Jesus called it out in front of everybody. Uh, and so he probably was that, that was probably the last straw for him, and um, or could might have been. Um, so that would have been a few weeks before, uh, before all of this. Um, but that's my best guess. I don't know for sure. I don't think anyone knows um, for sure. So he is arrested, and he um, he protects his followers. He protects them in at least two ways. Uh, he says, I am he, take me, let these men go. And they do, right? But he also protects Peter. How does he protect Peter? Yes. Yeah, by, by healing Malchus's ear, he likely kept Peter from having the same fate as Jesus. Uh, so uh, he, um, he uh, was very... Um, Careful to take care of his um, his betray or his excuse me his disciples, uh, and then the Act Two is the trial, and then uh, Act Three is um, Jesus' denial, and then uh, Act Four uh, is Pilate's trial, but that uh, will come later. So um, he protects the disciples. Uh, he goes to Annas's house. Annas' house was, um, uh, this is actually his house. We know that this was his house, uh, or the remains of it. Uh, 
Um, and um, I think they just took him there to buy time uh, for the Caiaphas to get the Sanhedrin together at night. Uh, they were all, you know, in their beds probably, uh, and now Zeke and Alan getting them together uh, so that they could try Jesus um, under the cover of darkness. Um, and uh, then this is some possible remains of the high priest's house. We'll talk more about that um, in a little bit. But as I told you yesterday, uh, Annas hadn't been the head, uh, the high priest for 20 years, but he had the most power. He had, he was more powerful, and he was more respected than Caiaphas was. Caiaphas was his son of son law so Caiaphas was married to his daughter. Uh, and so, really, the Caiaphas was something of a figurehead. Annas was the one with the uh, that was the head of, of all religious affairs in Jerusalem even though he had no official position at this time. Uh, that happens sometimes. Uh, you know, because we all know, I mean, Mr. Hood's really in charge of everything. Um, so, um, it, I, I don't know about this. Probably hated Jesus because of lost business. The curriculum says that, that Annas um, was... Um, one of those who was making money off of selling things in the temple. But the Bible doesn't actually tell us that. So I don't know where they get their information on that. Is it possible? It is possible. But it's nowhere stated. So um, I don't know if, if that's really true. So, um, so then they go to Caiaphas's house where the Sanhedrin um, has um, arrived to have this um, court uh, to um, uh, to try Jesus. And the high priest uh, questions him and uh, he answers um, and uh, he answers in a way that the person guarding him is angry at him and, and he slaps him. Um, and then um, there is actually, and we know where, where Caiaphas' house, Caiaphas's house is um, as well. And um, there is a jail um, under that um, under that house. Uh, and in fact, there, there is a pit where they would hold prisoners, especially if they were um, arrested at night and they had to wait till daytime to try the person. They didn't do that with Jesus, but... Um, and it is quite possible that Jesus spent that last night uh, of his life uh, in that pit. Um, we know that people were held there in part because there are crosses etched into the wall. Now, those came quite a bit after Jesus, but a number of places, I've told you this about Peter's house, where Peter's house was in Capernaum, um, that uh, early pilgrims to that that spot would etch crotch crosses into the wall to show that it was a place that was a revered place in Christendom, and, and there are uh, crosses etched in the wall. So this is the pit, and that's a that's the hole. It's not open anymore. We don't want anyone falling through. Um, but uh, that they would put ropes around under their arms and, and lower them down. And at the bottom, because there had been many people there before, uh, it was a quagmire. It was a cesspool of human feces and filth and rodents and just uh, a horrible uh, windowless, um, pitch dark uh, place. Um, and because they had to hold Jesus until daybreak um, for, to go to Pilate, um, that was quite likely where he spent um, that last night alone. Um, in that pit. Um, and then Act 3 is Peter's denial, and, and this is where we, we pick up with a picture of a rooster. Uh, and... Uh, Mount of Olives. 
So we've already talked about this a little bit, how a young girl um, said to him, you're one of his disciples, right? And he said, I did not. And then a second person asks, and he says, I am not. And then a third person asks. Um, and again, this time, uh, with cursing and calling down curses on the people, um, he, he vehemently uh, denied Christ for a third time. And then a rooster crowed. And Jesus said, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter thought it was impossible. Um, and, and, and the picture is imagined that this is happening just as Jesus is being moved um, very early in the morning um, and that their eyes met. I don't know that scripture tells us that, but I do know that that happened that the look on Jesus' face would not have been angry. Um, it, it would have been hurt. And I think compassion. Because Jesus knew it was going to happen. And just as it was with Judas, it was dark. It was not, not so much literally, but in Peter's heart um, at that time. So that is uh, the end of this lecture, so I'm going to stop this.